Captains, and welcome to MS Gaming. My name is Phoenix, and we are back with another Star Trek Online ship review. Today, I'm going to be reviewing the Intel Assault Cruiser, or the Archon-class vessel. Now, this vessel was released only a few days ago, so I had the opportunity to get it, and, well, here I am, going to be reviewing it today. So, without further ado, let's get into the nitty-gritty of the ship's stats, shall we? Starting off with the bridge officers, we have an Ensign Tactical, a Lieutenant Commander Tactical, a Lieutenant, uh, com uh, sorry, Lieutenant Engineering, a Commander Engineering, and a Lieutenant Commander Universal Intel Officer. For consoles, we have uh, five Engineering, three Tactical, and two Science. For weapons, we have four in the front and four in the rear. Starting with the base hull at level 50, it is 44,850. And at level 60, it is at 52,000. You get a shield modifier of 1, a base turn rate of 7, 4 device slots, impulse modifier of 0 0.15, inertia rating of 40. In addition to that, you get plus 10 power to weapons, plus 5 to shields and auxiliary power. You get the starship ability package, which I will go over in just a few minutes. And you get the crew, and you get the uh, standard cruiser command array, which is strategic maneuvering, shield frequency modulation, weapon system efficiency, and attract fire. You also get the universal console, the increment phase cloaking device. Not only that, but it does come with a wide angle quantum torpedo as well, just like the Regent class. Now let us move on to the design of the ship, shall we? Alrighty, so here is the Archon. So as you can see here, the saucer section, um, it is fairly rounded, but it does have kind of like a, almost a triangle shape to it, a little more rounded near the front, but it does have that tip. So uh, there's that. Uh, let's see here. Now at the back of it, it's, it's uh, curved inward. Um, so you do have that. You do have this long piece right here, um, which, does jut out a little bit. I uh, don't know what that is for. Maybe maybe lights for um, shuttles. I'll get to that in just a moment. Now I would imagine that this little dot here is probably the bridge. Um, Starfleet likes to have their bridges on top of the saucer section. Um, now I could be wrong on this, but who knows? And then here at the bottom here, you have the bottom of the saucer section. Uh, not really much to write home about. Um, does have this little piece here. Oh, and on either side, there's this thing uh, uh, on, on either side here. Now, I know it's a little bit difficult because I have the Type 7 texture on it, but this is kind of like a kind of like a, like a force field thing. Uh, now, I don't know if that doesn't look like it's big enough for shuttles or anything like that, but uh, be aware that it is there. Okay, back to the bottom here. Uh, one thing I did notice right off the bat was the, the NX and the registry is backwards. Now, I don't know if that was a mistake on Cryptic's part or if that's how they wanted it. Either way, that's something I don't like. I, I prefer it to be the other way <coughs> or uh, properly. Uh, you do have this piece here, so I wouldn't be surprised is if there is a saucer separation module that you could probably put on there. Um, you have the deflector dish, which is seated fairly back. Uh, it's a lot larger than the other ones. Um, and it's yellow. That's the interesting thing. It is yellow or orange, whatever you want, you, you, you prefer. Um, you do have these gluey pieces on either side here. Uh, so you have the, uh, the usual round body and the uh, at the bottom here <coughs> uh, and you have your little slide here as I like to call it there is looks like a there is appears to be like a little shuttle bay in there um, I'm not 100% sure but that's what it looks like at the back here where it straightens out there's a little thing here that could be an uh, observation deck or something like that why it's at the back and why it's facing the back, I don't know. People might get sick. I, I don't know for sure. All right, so uh, back of the so back to the saucer at the very back here, you have the impulse engines, which is interesting because they've done like a little bit of design. 
This reminds me of the uh, of the Dodge Charger uh, rear uh, lights or the uh, the turn signals. Why I don't know. That's just the way it, it looks to me. The interesting thing here at the back, underneath the saucer, under this little lip here, there's three shuttle bays. There's three of them. Count one, two, three. Now. There's this thing here. I don't know, again, if that's like another observation deck watching the shells come in or whatever. But, um, or maybe just like, uh, like maybe maybe a traffic controller for the shuttles coming in and out of the, uh, the vessel. Um, <clears throat> so you have here on the top here, notice this piece right here. This is very similar to uh, the Intel uh, ships that were released with Delta Rising. Uh, this one looks a lot much bigger. Now, nothing comes out of here. There's there's no real Intel um, abilities or anything like that. So why it's called an Intel Assault Cruiser, I have no idea, to be honest. But there is that shape there, which is, like I said, very similar to the Intel uh, vessels. Now, <clears throat> it, uh, it slopes all the way down here. And as it gets near to the end, it also curves inward. So it's getting very, very shorter. Uh, width wise at the back here and then when you come to the back it's nice and round here <clears throat> and then you have the pylons here which at the uh, at the base of where it meets the hull it's very very wide it curves uh, the front curves back and the uh, and the uh, the back here curves even further back here <clears throat> and then they kind of sweep somewhat upward maybe uh, I want to say Maybe a 30 degree angle. Now, I, I'm, I, it's for me, it's hard to see what angle uh, or degree angle it, it would be at, but it's just a guess. Please, it's, it's just, a, it's just my guess. So please don't, uh, don't take it uh, as, as fact. Okay. Um, trying to find any information like on design specs or whatever on this vessel, because it's one that uh, Cryptic has designed. There's going to be no specs whatsoever uh, online. So unfortunately, I have to go with what I'm seeing and what um, and, and, and my uh, and my guesses here. The one thing I really enjoyed the di design of the ship. The one thing, the one thing that I do not like is the warp nacelles. My question to Cryptic is, what the frack? Seriously, like if this is supposed to be an Intel assault cruiser, you would think that the warp nacelles would be nice and small and sleek like the Regent. But no, we have to have huge bulbous warp nacelles. Unless this thing can reach warp 13 all on its own, which I highly doubt, um, <laughs> they don't need to be this big. Um, so starting with the Bussard Collectors or the Red Scoops, whatever which one you prefer, uh, they are, I they're 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 orange. They're they're with all the new ships that have been coming out in regards to Tier Six and the twenty uh, fourth or twenty fifth century, whatever century we're in in this game. Um, I've noticed that the war or the Bussard Collectors are a nice bright orange. They're not red anymore or like a dull orange, kind of like in the toss era. Um, so, I mean, in that kind of, in that, in that sense, it's, if, it, if it's kind of going back to the toss era, it's a nice way of doing it. Um, but I find that this, the, the warp nacelle designs lately have just been really eh. They're not, they're not great. They're just, they're horrible. I don't like them. They're ugly. So here you have the Bussard collectors. They're, they're huge. They're, they're not as big anymore, but they are like they're longer, and so maybe it can hold more. I don't know for sure. Um, but you've got like some little plating here that's around it, and then you got this little band here that looks like it's gonna hold it all in. <clears throat> I mean, you take that out, and the whole thing could probably pop out. Who knows? All right, and then you got, uh, and then you have the hull plating here between the Bassar collectors and the actual warp nacelle, and your warp nacelle here. You can see this nice big piece here and then at the back here you got this right here and it, it does slope so there's a bit of a slope I'm trying to get a good angle it's kind of hard here but you get a, a slope here it's uh, 
held in by this top piece here and then the bottom piece as well. <clears throat> so you got that. Um, like I said, overall, the design, I like the design. The design is very, very nice, very, very classy. Um, a nice uh, design spec to the uh, Sovereign class, but those warp nacelles, I'm sorry, they, they, they gotta go. They're horrible, they're ugly. I know you won't change it, but uh, you know, it's was it wasn't the best looking thing that you could probably do. I mean, they are they are very very slender. They're not they're not they're not round or they're not thick like most warp nacelles are, but they are they're very very narrow. But it's just they're they're huge, like they're not proportionate to the ship. I don't think, not 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 uh. <clears throat> for me, they're not proportionate. They just, they seem really, really big for this ship. Um, but uh, anyways, let's go into the customization and we'll see what customization options. Customization options, you have all the templates from the Archon, the Majestic, the Noble, Sovereign, and Regent class. For interiors, you can choose whatever bridge uh, setting you want. For windows, you get one through six. For material type, you get, well, I have the mirror, so uh, if you don't have the, any of the mirror versions, disregard this one. Uh, you get types one through seven plus the upgrade. Uh, again, cal color palettes, you get those. So uh, for here, you can choose uh, anything here. There is no Intel color option like there was with the actual Intel uh, uh, ships that came out last year so you can choose whatever pattern that you want again no Intel now for customization of the ship like I said you can choose whatever template you want which means you can also choose whatever saucer section or whatever you want in here so you can randomize your ship however you want so so yeah so you can make it look as ugly as you want or as cool as you want whatever which one you prefer the yeah, randomization button is no longer working for some reason so we're gonna just have to do this uh, actually here let's go back to here the Archon so I find that if you want a smaller saucer section the um, the majestic saucer section looks actually fairly nice with this vessel um, so if you're looking at customization uh, majestic you may want to look into um, now, as for bodies, I keep the arch on. I kind of like how it is. You can go with the Regent uh, nacelles because I think those look really nice and sleek. Um, as for the neck, just keep it on as the arch on seems to do fairly well. Now, pylons, um, uh, maybe go with the Sovereign here. So, there, the ship kind of looks neat, you know, looks kind of proportionate but uh, yeah so for customize customization options you have almost free reign on what you want within your ship and uh, yeah so there's that so like I said customize away people customize away now let's move on to my uh, my gear and then we'll get into an STF and see how well how well this ship performs so starting with my gear here with the four weapons I have the anti the fleet anti-proton weapons that's what I got going here uh, I left the wide angle quantum torpedo on now it's not like a bonus piece set or anything like that but because it came with the ship you know it's kind of my my job to highlight what comes with the ship kind of in a sense I mean it does come with like phaser stuff you know and then generic you know uh, deflector impulse warp and shields so the stuff I have on here for um, the deflector impulse and shields is the Borg set with the Delta Alliance trajector warp core um, again for aft weapons it's all um, fleet stuff with the uh, ancient omnidirectional beam array and the kinetic cutting beam for the engineering or you know what let's do tactical uh, normally do that last but in this case uh, we'll do engineering last so I have two vulnerability locators with one anti-proton mag regulator. This is a work in progress build. 
you know, so nothing is ever, ever finalized. So this is just what I was able to throw on. Uh, so for the science consoles, I have the assimilated module and the exotic particle field exciter. For the engineering, I have the hydrodynamics, hydrodynamics compensator. Apologize for that. I have the crystalline absorption matrix, and that's just for the plus 17.5% anti-proton damage and the plus 17.5 all energy damage resistance rating. So there's that. Uh, I have the Nakura particle converter, and then uh, I threw on the Metrion gas canister, and I'll tell you why in just a few minutes. This one came with the Regent class uh, ship. So what it does is it ejects Metrion gas, it does minus 90% minus turn rate, minus 75% impulse speed, disables cloaks, and that's for the enemy's AOE damage. And then you can ignite it for three, uh, 3,691 .1 plasma damage for five seconds. So if you've got a plasma build going, this would be beneficial for you. And then we'll get into the uh, console that the ship actually comes with. Uh, so it comes with the incremental phase cloaking device. So when activated, it does plus, or no, sorry, this is a passive. This is passive, so you don't have to activate it. So it gives you a plus 1% critical chance, gives you plus 50%, or sorry, plus 50 starship tactical readiness, so it improves your tactical bridge officer cooldowns. So when you do activate it, it does AOE taunt, so it, uh, it taunts your enemies that come at you. So foes taunts up to five foes within five kilometer, kilometers, for 15 seconds so to yourself it does immunity all energy damage for 10 seconds to self minus 50% all energy damage for 10 seconds after those 10 seconds you get plus 4805 stealth for 5 seconds cannot be targeted for 5 seconds no collision for 5 seconds cannot launch hangar ships for 5 seconds not that it's a problem because there's no hangar ships on here uh, so uh, weapons offline for five seconds that's a drawback and immunity all damage for five seconds so my understanding for the incremental shape uh, phase shift is the first part you phase in and out right and then after that you phase completely out no one can hit you and you can't fire back so there's that now the reason why I have the Metron gas canister is for a two-piece bonus set and we're just gonna quickly look into that um, so it gives me the assault cruiser versatility so I get plus 10% directed energy damage and then plus 35% flight turn rate so uh, so that's gonna help my turn rate just a little bit better now uh, cryptic has joined with um, whiz kids and for the attack wing uh, stuff they've re-released the I guess the Enterprise E they've I guess they repainted it or something like that so they're re-releasing it and it comes with a code I'm looking at getting it but the problem is uh, when I was talking to one of the people at the collectible shops they were saying it could be three weeks or it could be two months so I will keep my eyes peeled for this and I'll see if I can get it um, and then I'll review that ship later on but uh, and then if I get the if I can get the three piece bonus set because it does come with a uh, quant or a Metron gas warhead launcher, so uh, there there'll be that uh, console as well. So it comes with a three piece, and so when you get uh, all three, you get uh, uh, what is that? You get the battle cloak ability. So with this, you get the battle cloak. Uh, target self 20 second recharge minus 5 current shield power per second plus 5 uh, free flight speed 50% defense uh, and after decloaking does plus 15% damage bonus for a brief duration after 3 seconds plus 10 flight turn rate after 3 seconds 4,971 stealth so that's with a 3 piece bonus set um, which for me is might take a while depending on when that uh, that uh, piece is available in Canada. So down here we have the ship mastery, which at first level here we have absorption, absorbable. Yeah, I can't tech. I can't talk today. <clears throat> so
So for the ship mastery, we have for at level one, we have the absorptive hull plating, which gives plus 25 physical and kinetic damage resistance rating. At level two, which I'm almost at here, says rapid repairs. So regenerates 8,000 or sorry, 874.2 hull. So 1.25% of your current max every three seconds in space. Twice this amount in uh, re uh, is regenerated out of combat. Enhanced hull plating plus 25 to all energy and radiation damage resistance ratings. And then um, armored hull, which gives you 10% uh, hull hit points. And then for the mastery, the level at level five, you get specialist knowledge. So uh, intel and command uh, bridge officer abilities reduce engineering bridge officer ability recharge time. So minus 20% recharge time on engineering bridge officers can occur once every five seconds. So if you're all about getting your, uh, your bridge officers done quickly, uh, especially for engineering, that would be the one to go with. Let us move on to the skills. So here's all my skills, nothing to write home about. Here's my traits, I'm still working on everything. And then here is my station. So for my lead, or sorry, my Ensign Tactical, I have Tactical Team 1. For my Lieutenant Engineering, I have uh, Emergency Power Weapons 1, Directed Energy Module 1. For my Lieutenant Commander Tactical, I have Torpedo Spread 1, Alpha Pattern Beta, and fire at will three for my uh, lieutenant commander universal uh, intel I just threw on science I don't really have an intel officer I do have one but it's a tactical and I don't really want another tactical um, and I don't know if the tactical uh, intel abilities are the same as the science I'm not sure I really haven't looked too much depth into that but anyways for abilities I have science team one Hazard emitters two, and then gravity well one, and then for my commander ta or my commander engineering, I don't know why I'm just I'm getting mixed up. Anyways, uh, emergency power shields, uh, engineering team, emergency power weapons three, and then ace tom beam two. So that's what I got going for me. So let's take a ride or. <laughs> Let's get into an STF and we'll do the uh, the Borg Infected Space Advance and we'll see how well we do with this ship. Alright. So I'm going to give us some enhanced... Faster. <clears throat> now I'm not recording my DPS this time. So um so but uh hey, look at that. We are just like <coughs> Someone who's doing quite a bit of damage, I, I would assume. And the uh, shield one is gone. So I'm gonna just use the, uh, the crystalline matrix there just to increase my damage. Alright, so we're gonna use this ship here. sitting over here just doing whatever someone was uh already uh doing over here all right so let's 
do this. I want to keep the next one on gas. Yes, I think. <laughs> oh, shoot, we didn't get that one. Darn it. I was too busy to pull it around, I think. That's okay, that's okay. Okay, you know what? As long as, long as things go well, destroying this, yeah, so now, now we take out the rest of this thing. this thing as quickly as possible. There we go. Alright, now. This. There we go. Now we move on to the uh, tactical queue here. Very, very slowly. There we go. Now we got some speed here. There we go. Alright, I'm going to do this shift again. Let's see what happens. Okay, so you see how it's kind of fuzzy there. Okay, now, now I'm kind of like invisible. Oh, there we go. Pop, pop back out of that. There we go. So it doesn't, so it doesn't last for very long. But uh, you know, it is something, something useful at least. There we go. Let's get out of here. Ooh, -hoo. awesome. So there we go. Uh, not a bad ship. Now for an Intel ship, like I said, with the name with an Intel and doesn't have any Intel abilities, other than just a bridge officer, um, you know, not not wonderful. But um, as as a cruiser, it flies very very nicely. I like it. Uh, you know, can hold it hold its own. Uh, I didn't have any issues. With uh with anything, uh in regards to the STF here, uh now we did work fairly well as a team, but you know, I think I only lost shields uh once, and you know was able to quickly recover that. But uh, other than that, I mean, it's it's a pretty nice ship. Like I said, it, two two things. One is very very minor, and the other one is kind of uh, you know shake my head. The minor thing is the registry on the bottom of the saucer section, which is flipped backwards. I do, I'm not a fan of that. I don't like that. I hope that's something that they can fix. And then the other thing is the nacelles. The nacelles, I'm sorry. For me, they are ugly, but um, you know you could always change those with, with one of the other uh, ships that are available uh, with the assault cruiser. Anyways, guys, that is it for me. Thank you for watching. Live long and prosper. And as always, we'll see you out there.